Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now recently I've had quite a few teachers DMing me asking how I transitioned out of teaching into the tech industry. And so I thought I would do this video to help explain about the different types of roles available out there in a tech company. Now this is based on my own experience of being in a tech startup for coming close to two years now. And I really wanted to do this video because coming from a government job into the corporate world, I think it's a huge change and there are very and there are many types of roles available that I didn't know about before. And so I really hope that this video will help all the mid-career switches out there. So let's get right into it. So the first role is software engineering and that is the role that I transitioned to initially. So there are many types of engin software engineers out there. But typically what you will hear is either a front-end engineer, a back-end engineer, or if you are both, then you are a full stack. So a front-end engineer is typically in charge of anything that an end consumer would see visually on a website or app, for example. So while a front-end engineer deals with all the interactions that an end user does with the website or the app, a back-end engineer is in charge of the logic behind that. So usually your data that is appearing on your website or app comes from the database and the backend engineer is in charge of creating and maintaining the database and writing logic to pass this information from the backend database to the front end. There are also other types of backend engineers who are in charge of DevOps, for example, which essentially is improving the efficiency and security of the backend systems. Now, a full stack engineer is technically someone who is able to do the entire range it means from the front end to the back end to DevOps for example. So as a mid career switcher I do think that going into front end engineering is easier just because there is more, it's more visual and it's something that you can create your own projects of by following YouTube tutorials etc. However for back end engineering I would say you need a lot more real life experience especially since a lot of problems crop up when the product is actually live in production to other consumers or businesses. So you would need to gain real life experience in order to deal with all those problems. So it's definitely still possible to go into backend engineering. It's just that I would think it's easier to go into front end, especially if you have no prior experience. Now for software engineering in general, you will need to go through a tech interview. And I think I explained it more in my other video. But yeah, generally you need to be ready to do whiteboarding and be able to explain your thought process well. So another role that I do see more mid-career people transitioning into would be a UI UX designer. So for a UI UX designer, um, I do explain it in my other video. So for a UI UX designer, generally they are in charge of thinking of the user flows, the user interactions that a customer would experience on a website or application they would come up with the designs and then transform that into low fidelity and high fidelity screens on Figma, for example, where the developers will then take that design and translate it into code. So for UI UX design, you will need to build up your own portfolio and explain the thought process behind why you choose to have certain buttons here or why you choose to design the screen this way, why you choose to have a user interaction as such in the website or the app. Yeah, and I think you would definitely need to be familiar with Figma as well. So that's something that you should definitely brush up on if you are interested in becoming a UI UX designer. Another role that I often see courses for is for the data analyst or data scientist role. Now, technically there are two different, slightly different roles, but depending on the budget of the company, sometimes they will require someone to be proficient in both. Generally, a data scientist is someone who would find ways to capture, store, and manipulate the data. And that would also involve writing code to train the computer program to recognize patterns based on the data that is given to it. Yep, so that's technically what a data scientist does. Whereas the data analyst will take this existing data and then run through some analysis based on that and write reports. Um, and explain how this data can help to achieve business objectives, for example. So for these two roles, I do think that what you need to be good at is writing SQL. You need to be very familiar with that. And perhaps you also need to be good at Python. And especially nowadays, I think that a lot of companies will require the data scientists to help train AI models. 
So I think that would be good if you get some practice there as well. So the next team that you will typically see in a tech company will be your GTM team. GTM stands for Go To Market Team. And this team will help to formulate the strategy to help launch the product. Typically, your GTM team will consist of your product management, marketing, commercials. So what does a product manager do? Generally, the product manager is in charge of the vision of the product. A product manager would take the business objective and then talk to the data analysts and scientists as well as end consumers to figure out what sort of features the product needs to have such that it can hit the business objective. After which, they have, after deciding on the feature, they will also talk, they will liaise with the designers to come up with the designs. And then after which, they will liaise with the engineers to help build the feature and put it into the product. So essentially, the product manager will liaise with all the different stakeholders and hence has to be very good at communication. And it will definitely help if you have some te technical expertise as well. Uh, so this is the role that I recently transitioned into and I'm really excited about it because it's been something that I've wanted for a while. And yeah, I'll do another video about this if you're interested in finding out my journey of becoming a product manager. Another big role in the GTM team is the marketing role and there are many types of marketing in this new di digital age. So for example, in my company, we have uh, someone who is in charge of social media and KOLs. And that it really involves creating content for social, for the product social media and liaising with KOLs and affiliates. There's also content marketing where you have to write blog posts and liaise with people out uh, and liaise with companies to get content about the product out there. And then there's someone who has to analyze the different marketing strategies and decide which ones are working and which, one, which ones are not. And this is based on analysis of data. So the person has to be proficient in Google Analytics, for example, or SEMrush, for example. These roles, I feel, uh, like in my opinion, I feel that these roles are a little bit harder to get into just because you do have a lot of um, business graduates already fighting for these roles. Right? Unless, of course, you have your own social media following, for example, then maybe it will be easier to transition into this role. So next, you also have commercials and partnerships. So essentially, these people are the ones who are going out there to form partnerships with other companies and doing the business negotiations. In my opinion, it's a little bit harder to transition into these roles, into these roles as a mid-career transitioner, unless you have a lot of experience looking for partnerships um, on a large scale, right? That has commercial impact especially if you are trying to transition out from being a teacher. So if you do a lot of events for your school and getting partnerships from different companies, for example, maybe that will be good experience to write about. And that's a role that you can perhaps try. I do think that they usually look out for someone who has experience in consulting, um, who has done like business negotiations, etc. So it may be a bit harder to transition into if you are a mid-career switcher, to be very honest. In conclusion, these are the types of roles that you will typically see in a tech company and I hope this video has helped the mid-career transitioners out there to get a realistic view of what type of job positions there are available. To be very honest, I do think that the job market now is quite bleak and the competition is quite stiff, especially with all the tech layoffs that are happening. I would say it's still possible to do a mid-career switch However, you may, be, you may have to be prepared to take a pay cut or to do an internship instead. Um, and, and perhaps you have to be prepared to apply for a longer period of time before a company is willing to take the chance. That being said, if you are feeling stuck in your current job, and especially if you are stuck in your teaching bond, for example, and you are very sure you want to leave, take this time to make sure you upgrade yourself. Use your skills future, build out your portfolio, uh, or prepare your technical skills that you need in order to apply for the position that you want. So you have, you should network on LinkedIn and reach out to people that are working in the companies that you potentially want to apply for. Um, it's not going to be easy, but there are definitely still companies out there who are willing to take the chance on you. So feel free to comment uh, or leave a message if you have any questions and I'll try to help as much as I can. So yeah, thank you and see you in my next video. Bye.